Hello and welcome to Global Eye. I'm Parikshit Lutra. Prime Minister Modi is set to visit US for his first state visit from the 21st to the 24th of June. The last state visit took place during the visit of Manmohan Singh in 2009. The Prime Minister will receive an official welcome at the White House, hold a bilateral meeting and delegation level talks with President Biden. President Biden will also host a state dinner in honor of Prime Minister Modi. An address to the Indian community is also on the cards. Among the deliverables, there will be agreements on trade, defense and critical minerals. A significant progression of the Indo-US defense partnership will be the signing of a joint production agreement. Ahead of this visit, the Biden administration is likely to give a go-ahead to General Electric to produce jet engines to power Indian military aircraft in India. How important will this deal be for the Indian defense sector and what will be the importance of talks on critical minerals? Joining us now to take all of this forward is Ambassador Arun Singh, former Indian envoy to the United States, and Mukesh Aghi, President of US-India Strategic Partnership Forum. Thank you very much for joining us, gentlemen. Mr. Aghi, if I can begin with you, I believe you have some uh, breaking news for us in terms of the Prime Minister's joint address to uh, both, uh, both houses of the Congress. Yeah, I, I, I confirm right now, two minutes ago, White House basically released the letter inviting the prime minister along with the minority speaker and the majority speaker to have a joint uh, uh, session addressed by the prime minister. And I think that's significant because for the first time, you have a Indian prime minister speaking twice to the joint session. So that sends a very strong message. You have a Democratic president inviting him for a White House state dinner and you have a Republican Speaker of the House inviting him to uh, have a joint session speech. It's a bipartisan support to the visit and it's a strong message to the government of India. Right. Uh, Ambassador Arun Singh, coming to you now, this is Prime Minister Modi's first state visit. We've also heard this will be one of the longest state visits for any leader to the United States as Prime Minister Modi will be spending three nights there. How crucial is this visit for Indo-US ties? How important is this for Prime Minister Modi and President Joe Biden? So the fact that uh, this is a state visit is an important signal that the US has given in terms of how they see the India relationship. Because state visits uh, at that level of protocol are very rare in the US system. For example, if you uh, take the Biden presidency, it's been two and a half years since he became president. And the Indian Prime Minister will only be the third state visitor of the uh, Biden administration. But the first was President Macron in December last year, and then we had the South Korean president who was there in April. So that's one important dimension. And again, if you look at it historically, the Indian prime minister would be the only third Indian leader ever invited for a state visit to the US. There was uh, President Radhakrishnan in 1963, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, as you mentioned, in 2009, and the Indian prime minister. So in terms of the protocol, of course, it's very, very important and the signaling. <clears throat> but the fact remains that the Prime Minister has been to the U.S. several times since 2014 for bilateral visits, official bilateral visits, for multilateral visits, where he had bilateral meetings uh, with the U.S. President. He was there in September uh, 2021, when there was also a quad meeting uh, convened at that time. So there have been regular visits, but it's a signal that now they're doing a state-level visit. And there will be, I'm sure, uh, very important personal gestures uh, done during the visit as a signal of the importance they attach to the relationship and the importance of the relationship with the Indian Prime Minister. All right. Uh, Mr. Agi, coming to you, there has been a lot of talk about the deal between General Electric and an Indian entity to jointly produce jet engines for military aircraft in India. How crucial is that deal? Uh, what is the current stage where the deal is at, according to you? Well, this is very significant. Uh, you have to understand, there are only four countries which produce hot jet engines. And that's uh, France, and that's uh, uh, United States, uh, uh, UK. You know, not even China produces uh, uh, hot jet engines. So I think to transfer that technology to India and a co-manufacturer with HAL sends a very strong message. And you have to understand a jet engine compromises almost 30% cost of a plane. 
And so if you can produce jet engines, you can design frames around the jet engine itself. So I think it's very significant. The stage is basically, is first you have to get both uh, uh, the uh, uh, state approval, commerce department approval, DOD approval, then the White House has sent to the Congress for approval. So that process is continuing. And at some stage, both GE and HA have to sit down and also work out the commercial agreement between the two companies. But the momentum is moving the right direction. And if that happens and it gets announced, it sends a very strong message that the ties between India and US have gone beyond the commercial deal. Now they're working on transferring technology, which is critical to India's growth strategy also. Uh, so you're saying that uh, the HAL being confirmed as a joint production partner, that has already been agreed upon, Mr. Agi, according to you? So my understanding is HAL has been uh, basically working on some of the uh, uh, GE uh, uh, earlier part of the version of the engines itself. So they are in discussion. Uh, have they finalized the details? Not yet. They're still working on that. But I think it's important to understand it's not just this technology itself. This is just the beginning of multiple other technologies which will be transferred to India, so India becomes much more self-sufficient in, in defense technology and civil aviation technology and become less reliant on Russia and other platform itself. Right. Uh, coming to you, uh, Ambassador Arun Singh, the agreement on critical minerals, how important would that be when it comes to the deliverables of this visit? Uh, Parinchit, uh, before I respond to your question, just wanted to add a couple of thoughts to what uh, Mukesh said on the GE jet engine technology. And uh, in addition to the points he mentioned, that if this deal goes through, it will be significant, one, because in 2014, India and the US had done the agreement on defense trade and technology initiative. And one of the criticisms was that no major technology transfer arrangement could be worked out at that time. Now, since then, of course, the U.S. in 2016 declared India a major defense partner. And then in 2017, President Trump uh, placed India on strategic trade authorization level one, which means highest level technology releases that the U.S. can to its closest allies. So in a sense, steps were being taken. And in January this year, uh, India and U.S. launched a new initiative for a partnership in critical and emerging technologies, artificial intelligence, quantum, cyber, 6G, biotech, commercialization of space, semiconductors, signaling that they want to take to, uh, the partnership to a notch higher in terms of technology collaboration. So given that, and in that uh, statement that was put out after that meeting, there was a specific reference on how the U.S. administration will try and process uh, the G engine proposal. So if it goes through, I think it will be another signal mm. that the U.S. is advancing the relationship with India to another level of technology partnership. So given that, I think what you mentioned, uh, the partnership for critical minerals, of course, will be important, but even more important would be advancing this partnership on critical and emerging technologies because these technologies are going to transform completely the way we live, the way we work, and if we are able to partner with each other in these cutting-edge technology areas, then we will be able to create new opportunities for production, new opportunities for trade, and that will be very significant. Right. Uh, Mr. Agi, give us a sense of uh, the conversation taking place on uh, critical minerals. What has been the uh, industry chamber's view and recommendations to both governments as to what should be uh, the next steps in terms of operationalizing the agreement, the talks on critical minerals and technology? Well, let's take one example, which is lithium. And, and, and if India is going to commit to 2070, a zero carbon environment, uh, it needs to be able to not only mine, but process and come up with some of the renewable technology through lithium itself. And today, if you look at almost 90% of that environment is controlled by China. Uh, United States is worried about that. Europe is worried about that. So is India worried about that. So I think it's important that both countries 
work out the process, the te technology transfer, just on one aspect of a lithium processing and, and building into a battery environment. It is a win-win value proposition. India just announced that it discovered large uh, 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 lithium uh, environment in, in, in the state of Kashmir. So I think uh, it's important we leverage a lot of those technology, bring them to India, and become a processing center, not only just for India itself, but for Europe and Western uh, Europe itself. Right. Uh, Ambassador Arun Singh, my final question. The G deal, as uh, Mr. Agi is being pointing out, that it may happen with HL. If this does go through, what kind of a signal does it send to China? I think the purpose is not just China. The purpose is to advance the U.S.-India partnership. Uh, because both countries are invested in each other uh, for also the strength in the bilateral relationship. You know, the U.S.-India uh, trade is about $191 billion. It has increased more than seven times in the last 20 years. And U.S. remains uh, India's largest partner. So also, I think there is a sense in India for that for the kind of aspirations we have in terms of manufacturing, in terms of production, uh, technology, U.S. will remain a very important partner. So I think the first is to enable ways so the, the aspirations of the Indian people for development can be brought about. So I think you should keep that in mind. And as far as the, the signal to China is concerned, I think uh, it's the broader India-US relationship because the US has now said on a number of occasions that it sees the rise of India to be in US interest. It sees India as a net security provider in the region. It sees India as a very important partner in the context of the Indo-Pacific. So the G deal will be just one element in that to show that the two countries are ready to take technology partnership, defense technology partnership to another level, which will deepen the overall relationship between them. And again, the U.S. has said that, that you know, even if India doesn't take an overtly anti-China position, even if India is not an ally as such of the U.S., but a strategic partner, a strong India in itself is a deterrent to China's unilateral and aggressive posturing in South China Sea, East China Sea, along the LSE and elsewhere. All right. Uh, we've run out of time, but Ambassador Arun Singh and uh, Mukesh Agi, thank you very much for joining us. And, uh, Prime, and President Biden has also tweeted now to say that uh, Prime Minister Modi will be addressing a joint meeting of the U.S. Congress on the 22nd of June during his state visit. Uh, we are going to take a short break now, but don't go anywhere. We will be discussing the BRICS foreign ministers meeting that has been held in South Africa. Foreign ministers of Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa have called for rebalancing of the global order away from the West. A detailed discussion.